suspicious enough of the murders and the pattern. So many of them, so brutal. Such so young people. I remember everything vividly, all the all the murders and everything. And the Bacchus girl, you know, the little twelve year old that was killed at the State Theater. You know, I wake up sometimes uh, with a nightmare with her. After all these years, I live once in a while, I still do. Forty years ago, darkness descended over the streets of Toledo. Over a 16 month period, two serial killers, brothers Anthony and Nathaniel Cook, terrorized the city. They stalked their victims late at night. So there was a lot of conversation among law enforcement and the community. The community was um, very, very concerned. You know, would they be next? Ten people were killed. Others were victimized but survived. I just hear those words over and, and just the idea of telling me to get undressed and just the different things that they said, it still sticks through my mind. On May 14, 1980, Sandra Pagorski and Tommy Gordon were sitting in his car on Utica Street. Nathaniel Cook smashed in the passenger window and the brothers forced their way into the car. They were driven to a remote location in western Lucas County. It was just the start of the brothers' rampage. When you see the crime scenes and you just, you don't really forget those things. Retired police detective Frank Stiles hunted the men from one crime scene to the next. It got to the point where I dreaded to go to work because I knew it was my job to catch them. And I wasn't doing my job. And I felt that way. And I, you know, I go to work and I thought, oh my God, there's going to be another murder I have to deal with. Beginning in January 1981, the attacks came with increasing regularity. On January 17, Connie Thompson's body was found in a Langendurfer Bancroft culvert. Just 10 days later, Cheryl Bartlett and her boyfriend, Bud Coates, were abducted. The night before, Bartlett had a premonition that she would be raped and shot. She told her mom of that disturbing dream. She said, stay in the house, do not go out. This is a bad neighborhood because we lived on the south end. And I, I was 18 years old and I thought I could do it. And I walked up to Kroger's by myself. Everything was fine. On the way back, my heart started racing. It's like something's telling me something's gonna happen. And then it did. Cheryl and Bud were taken into a garage. Cheryl was raped and a bullet was fired into her back. When they shot, I started screaming. They ran. And then when we ran to the front of the house, I thought I was gone. But she survived. Few people survived the cooks. Tony Cook didn't plan on anybody surviving. He didn't care if they saw him because he was going to kill him anyways. But the brothers' depravity and viciousness shocked the city a few weeks later. 12-year-old Don Backus was found raped and murdered in the basement of the former State Theater on Collingwood Boulevard. It's just what that little girl went through. I mean, all these are vicious, horrible crimes, even the ones that survived the slimy creatures of the earth that took my most precious gift from God, they need flushed down the gutter. That would even be too mild. Don's mother, Sharon, spoke out strongly against the men before their sentencing. Guilty pleas to all three of those counts. She now keeps a landline in her home, awaiting a call about the death of the Cook brothers. I want the public to be aware of what kind of monsters are walking the face of the earth. You really got to be demented and hateful to torture people like they did. Today, Nathaniel walks the streets of Toledo as a free man. The brothers cut a deal in 2000. In exchange for confession to all their murders in Lucas County, Nathaniel was freed in 2018. He's on Ohio's sex offender registry. Hey, Nathaniel. He refused to go on camera, but he told me that life is not going that well for him. When asked if he wanted to apologize, he simply said, I just want to go on with my life. Anthony is eligible for parole in 2024, but he will likely die in prison. 
Before being in prison, Anthony was suspected of 11 rapes and 11 killings. His brother has been linked to four murders and four rapes. But police believe that there may be many more victims. You know, I've never gotten over this case. Other cases I've been able to walk away from them after a while, even some of the heinous ones, but this case is, you know, haunted me for 40 years.